Hi everyone, my name is Jean, and this is your Art Enrichment Series Session 2, The Art of Cubism. I've had the good fortune of traveling the world extensively and observing some of the greatest art collections out there. It is my passion and my privilege to be able to share some of these scintillating snippets that I've collected over many years of dealing in art, looking at art, and making art. So let's begin. I think it's important to note that Cubism is widely regarded as the crucial turning point for art to have transformed into the free-thinking, no-limits zone that we know it as today. The end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th centuries have proven to be an immensely innovative time in world history. This might have been due to the rapidly changing world uh, after the Industrial Revolution, or it might have been because of severe political instability. But I like to think that there was some sort of mental enlightenment taking place in the human race. If you've watched session one, The Art of Impressionism, you'll know that the artists of the mid-19th century already started breaking all the rules of visual art. The widely accepted beauty that dominated Western culture since the Renaissance was no longer considered relevant. It was considered boring. It was 1908 and an artistic revolution was on the horizon. Artists were ready to write a brand new script for this visual language. So what is Cubism? Well, as usual, I encourage you to listen to the name first. Cubism. What is a cube? A cube is a three-dimensional shape that has flat planes and volume. Okay, but how does that translate to fine art? In cubist art, objects are scrutinized, broken up, and reassembled in an abstracted shape. Instead of depicting objects from a single viewpoint, the artist portrays the subject from a multitude of perspectives. Deconstruction that climaxes in constructed geometric planes. This required the viewer to tap into their own confusion and become an active participant in deciphering what on earth they're looking at. What? They say that when we're pushed out of our comfort zones, that's when the magic happens. So what spurred Cubism? Well, some of the most noteworthy and influential painters of Europe became intrigued by exotic art from around the world, like that of Asia and wild Africa. Have a sneaky suspicion that you already know the name of the artist that I'm going to mention as the mastermind of Cubism. Spanish artist Pablo Picasso worked closely with French artist Georges Braque in Paris. A prodigious painter and sculptor, Picasso spearheaded the concept of Cubism and by doing so laid the foundation for an avalanche of forward-thinking creations. This painting from 1908 is titled Les Demoiselles d'Avignon or The Woman of Avignon, which is a street in Barcelona's red light district, by the way. It's considered to be the first real Cubist artwork. Can you spot those exotic influences I mentioned earlier? Look at the ladies' mask-like faces and the flat geometric planes of the rest. This painting shocked viewers and it challenged the status quo. Aren't women supposed to be portrayed either beautiful, passive, at least angelic? Yet, Picasso offers us a more fierce, seductive and in-your-face perspective of this group of working women. Perhaps his goal was to unleash the savage inside of us. Other artists like Fernand Lejeur, Jean Gris and Robert Delaunay soon followed and presented their own thought-provoking styles of this mind shift of a movement. It's worth mentioning that Picasso and Brock adored the work of master painter Paul Cézanne, an influential artist who passed away shortly before the commencement of Cubism. Surely Cézanne's carved landscapes and portraits piqued their interest in the simplification of form and color. The early approach to Cubism is referred to as analytical Cubism. They analyzed, 
They dissected, they reassembled into flat planes and sharp angles. The second phase of cubism is referred to as synthetic cubism, where fragments of news and random papers were added in collage to the geometric planes so as to add opinions of current commercial culture or invite us to reconsider what we thought we knew about what we're looking at. This was called papier collé, paper collage. This is a portrait by Georges Braque of a Portuguese guitarist seated in the window of a harbour cafe. Can you see it? Me neither. But look at the added letters and numbers, helping us decipher this painting. Top right, we can make out D. Ball, and this was a fragment of a poster advertising a grand ball. And then the numbers 1040, which is a piece of paper from a barbell. Cubist artwork steers clear of becoming too abstract by still having a strong focus on real objects. They're just perceived in a brand new way. This is a portrait of one of Picasso's famed mistresses in love, the photographer Dora Maar. Picasso literally presents us with many perspectives. Look at the way her face is painted both from the side and the front. Her face and body vibrant, forms angular, which comments on Dora's temperament. Yet, the background reminds us of a cage. Was she trapped? This is one of the more gentle portrayals of a lover, almost a compliment to the sitter, if you consider some of the violently distorted portrayals of other women Picasso created. Looking inside and around an object rather than at an object, the poet and critic Guillaume Apollinaire wrote in 1913 of Cubism, resemblance no longer has the slightest importance. This is my curated gallery selection of modern living artists who, in my opinion, are furthering the good work laid out by their Cubist predecessors. Artist and architect René Rousseau playfully transforms abstracted planes into a passionate embrace. She creates strong, striking art. She already sports an impressive resume, like collaborating with IKEA twice, she was selected as a feature designer for 100% Design SA, and she's participated in the Venice Biennale. The inspiration of Rhys Swanepoel often springs from a single photograph. He then closes his eyes and allows his imagination and spontaneity to take the lead. Figures emerge as fragments of form. Shadow and light perform in an abstracted dance. Celebrated graphic artist Rudy De Wett compresses symbols, shapes, color and form into playful arrangements. They're fantastical. They're both familiar and edgy. They're vibrant and cool. Subconsciously channeling his inner cubist, Aide Capades exercises the quintessential cubist motives of examining, deconstructing and reassembling an object. Which one is your favorite? I'd love to know why. Please tell me in the comments below. For more information on these works and on how to collect them, head on over to my website www.hugomodern.com. I believe art is your mind's indulgence and it enriches us. By adding good art to your walls, you create moments to pause in and to connect to the wonders of world history and the beauty of life. Thank you for allowing me to share a little bit of my passion. What are we going to look at next? Fauvism? Surrealism? Expressionism? Write your comments below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified as soon as I upload the next presentation. Stay safe, stay stimulated, and I'll see you next time. Bye!